In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the USB interface that works for the Planet CNC software. I'll also show you how to wire this up with all of the electronics and show the electronics working. And I'll also show you a little bit on how the software works with this USB controller. Okay, this interface comes with many terminals. You have a keyboard jog header here. This is where the USB cable plugs in. You have the driver terminals here. You have mist, coolant, and spindle control on this portion. And you have the limit switches, or the limit switch terminals in this location. This header is only for programming the, the microcontroller, which is a PIC microcontroller. This USB interface takes instructions from the software, from the USB, and then outputs step signals on the drivers and receives input signals for the limit switches and also outputs signals for the control of mist, coolant, and spindle control. Okay, I'm going to plug it in. And what you'll notice is there's a blinking LED. That blinking LED is not to show you on state. It is actually a status LED that shows that it's functioning correctly. You'll notice that you'll get an activation, a license activation screen or a dialog box. And it shows you the serial number and this key. And you'll have to purchase a license from Planet CNC to make this work, but you can use it in a trial. So you can use it to a certain extent. You'll be able to jog it. You'll be able to do certain files with uh, certain sizes. It will only process a limited number of, um, of instructions. We'll be going over in this video the use of just the jogging to show the functioning of the, the electronics and how to jog the, the actual motors. First I'd like to go over wiring a single motor and a single driver just to to keep things simple to make sure that we get that single driver and that single motor working first and then we'll know that we have it wired correctly for that single driver we can go ahead and connect the other drivers one at a time and test those drivers once we have them connected. Okay for this task or procedure wiring the first driver. We have to select which driver we want to wire. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and use the x-axis. The x-axis has CP, which is this terminal here, CW, which is the next one over, and ground. And what that tells you that the signals are working in, in an active high configuration, which means the CP is connected to the CP plus. And whenever a signal is produced, the signal creates a, a positive pulse up to 5 volts and then goes back down to zero volts. The CW in the same way, the, it's active on the high, which is, means in one direction, and then not active in the low, which is in the other direction. And you can toggle that to get the, your machine to go in the correct direction. And the ground will be connected to the CP minus and the CW minus. What you'll need for this task is wire strippers, wire cutter, or wire cutter also here, First, we'll connect the CP terminal to the CP plus terminal here. The CP plus terminal is the pulse or the step terminal. Okay, now I have the CP plus terminal connected to the CP terminal on the, on the USB controller. I'm going to connect the CW terminal to the CW plus terminal on the driver. Okay, and finally we need to connect the ground to the CP minus and the CW minus. We're not going to be plugging in the REST or the enable pins on the driver, so we'll leave those alone. And what I'll generally do is create a little jumper first, so I don't have to do that in the terminal. I'll jump this from CP minus. I put both of the wires into CP minus. I'm going to jump this to CP plus or CP CW minus. I'm going to take this to the ground on the same set of terminals. 
So just to review, I have the CW, which is the green wire, C, uh, sorry, the CP, which is the green wire on this terminal, going to CP plus on the driver. I have the yellow, which is CW on the, on the controller, going to CW plus on the driver. And I have the black wire, which is ground, going to CP minus and CW minus. Now we're going to connect the power supply, which is going to bring power to the driver. We're going to connect the V plus to the VCC, the COM to the ground, and then after that we'll connect the, the motor to the driver. But first we need to take this to the outlet. So we need to connect the N which is neutral, L which is live, and the, the third prong which is the, the ground. And we'll connect that to the, these three wires which is white neutral, black live, and green ground. And do this while the, this particular extension cord is not plugged in. In-house we will generally put spade terminals on the ends of these wires, but for this demonstration we don't really need to, and you don't have to do that with your, your, with your own project. So we have black going to live, white going to neutral, and green going to ground. Now if this part of the process scares you, have an electrician do this. This is a very dangerous portion of it. When, if, when you start, when you plug this in, this becomes live and this can kill you. Okay, you also want to make sure that you set this to the correct input voltage of your country. If it's the US or a country that uses 115, make sure it's switched to 115. Otherwise, set it to 230 if you have a voltage input of between 220 and 240 volts. And this has to be set first before you do before you turn this on or you could damage the power supply. Okay, now we're going to connect the V plus to VCC. In some of the power supplies, you'll notice that the COM is also V minus. It means the same thing. V minus is ground or would be plugged into ground. Another thing I want to mention is the gauge of the wire that we're using for the signal, we're using 24 to 22 gauge. For the extension, we'll be using 16 gauge. And for the V plus and ground, for this is this would be 36 or 24 volts going to the driver, and this would be around 18 gauge. And now we'll take the com or common to the ground. Each of these terminal sets or the V plus will have three terminals and the common will have another three terminals. This is convenient when you're using three drivers. Okay, now I have the VCC plus and the ground connected to the power supply. Okay, here is the 425 ounce inch motor. This is a lot of torque and will and will move almost any mid small to mid size CNC machine. You'll have a lot of wires. You're gonna have about eight wires on this particular motor. The internal coil configuration for these motors generally have three different configurations. This is an eight wire motor. So the coil configuration is gonna look like this. Okay, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wires coming out of the motor. Another configuration you'll have is where you have six wires. where you have the center of the coils connected and you'll also have each end of the coil connected. And the final configuration would be four wires where you only have the coil ends connected. Motors that use only ends of the, the coils connected is, will be connected in bipolar series. This is the bipolar series configuration. When you have wires or six wires, this is generally a unipolar configuration where you'll use all six wires and connect them to the driver and a unipolar driver. If you want to connect this type of motor to a bipolar driver, you would have to eliminate these center wires from the coil and only use the end wires of the, co of the, of the coils 
similar to what you see here. The wires, the motors that have eight wires have the most versatile com combination of configurations where you can connect it to a unipolar driver by connecting these two together like this or you can connect it in bipolar series like this by eliminating the, the two central wires connecting them together making sure that you have them connected together because you have a continuous coil on the bipolar series and your configuration which is called bipolar parallel where you take these two wires connect them together and you take these two wires and you connect those together taking those to the driver with the drivers that we sell we only sell the bipolar drivers and there are two different ways you can connect those and that's bipolar series and that's bipolar parallel and the bipolar parallel makes more sense to connect it when you have low voltage but higher amps. The bipolar series makes more sense to connect it when you have higher voltage but lower amps. Voltage and amps affects the way your motor will move. In bipolar series you'll need more voltage to make the motor turn faster. In bipolar parallel you won't need as much voltage to turn it faster because you have the two coils connected in a, sh in a shortened in a shortened uh, span which is reducing the res resistance and what you're doing there is you're shortening the time constant when you have higher volt when you have lower voltage when you increase voltages with stepping motors you decrease the time constant which allows you to increase the speed of the motor it's being able to deliver the current faster to the motor when you need it to determine how to wire the motors, you'll need to go to the actual motor product page and get the data sheet. We'll be using the NEMA 24 stepping motor which is the 425 ounce inch. We can go into it, we can also click this but in most cases if it, you don't see the data sheet here on this part of the page, on the category page, you can go into the, the motor and click it there as well. You'll also have instructions in some of the motors like the NEMA 23 100 ounce inch you'll have the in the instructions you'll have the data sheet so let's go back to the 425 and let's click on the data sheet for this and you'll notice there's a bipolar parallel there's a bipolar series and then there's unipolar and you'll have the wiring configurations on the bottom here for this particular motor and you'll notice that you have the, bi the unipolar which takes the six wires you'll have the bipolar series which is connecting the center wires from the, the coils and then only using the end wires from the coils and in bipolar parallel you'll have the coil end and the center to the next coil going to each terminal also when you look at the the table for bipolar series and bi bipolar parallel you'll notice the amp requirements for this particular motor is 2.8 for parallel which is higher amp uh, higher current the series is 1.4, it's lower, you'll not need as much current to drive this particular motor in this configuration, but you will need more voltage, and it doesn't show voltage on this particular table, but you can use the Ohm's, the Ohm's Law formula to determine what voltage you would need using the ohms, the resistance, and the current. And you'll notice that when you have more amps, the relationship to voltage is reduced so you'll need lower voltage for higher amps or when it has lower amps you'll need higher voltage to drive the motor to the desired speed that you want with the same amount of torque that you expect you'll notice here that the torque stays the same but the amps are different and the voltages will be different because of the the ohms for this configuration we'll be using the bipolar par parallel since we're using a 24 volt power supply, generally we will deliver a 36 volt power supply with 8.8 .8 amp capacity or available draw. So what we'll need to do is take the red and the blue, connect them together, go to the A+, plus. take the yellow and black, connect them together, go to the A-, minus. take the white and the brown, connect them together, go to the B+, plus. and take the orange and green, connect those together, and go to the B-. minus. So let's go ahead and do that. 
Okay, now I'm going to wire the motor to the driver according to bipolar parallel. So the first on A plus is red and blue. So we'll take these two. You may need to strip off a little bit more. Generally this would be connected to another cable that's connected to the driver, but just for this demonstration I'm going to connect it straight from the motor. For A minus it's yellow and black. And remember, your motor may not have the same color wires, so you have to go to the website to determine what those colors are and where they go from the motor data sheet. Okay, white and brown is B plus. And finally, orange and green, two left over. I'm hoping I have good contact here because I don't have much wire, so we'll find out in a moment. Okay, so we have the wire going to from the motor to the driver. We have the driver plugged into the power supply, and we have the controller plugged into the driver. What you need to do is configure the dip switches. The dip switches are located right here. On is when the switch is up, and off is when the switch is down. And You'll also notice that there's a table on the top of these drivers that give you information on how to set the dip switches. The first table on this particular driver pertains to this, uh, the micro-stepping. The next table pertains to the number of amps or current that the motor requires. And if we remember correctly, it was around 2 point... Actually, it's 2.8 amps exactly. So I'm going to set this one to 2.7 amps. And I'm also going to set this one to 1 16th. Um, actually, I'm going to set it to 1 8th, micro-stepping, as, just a, as an example. So M1, M2, M3 is 0, 1, 1. So that would be 0, 1, 1. Yep. And then M5, M6, and M7. M4 is um, skipped, so you don't have to worry about M4. Uh, just keep it at the factory setting. So we're going to set that at 1, 1, 0. So that would be 1, 5, 1 for 6, and 0 for 7. And number 8 is keep it at that setting. Okay, now we're going to plug in the controller, and we're going to plug in the power supply. And now I'm going to plug in the controller. The blinking light should be on, and you'll hear the, the tone from the, from the computer saying, notifying you that the the USB is plugged into the controller and, the con and it recognizes the controller. In software, we're going to just press cancel for the, for the uh, license activa activation. That's what you'll get in the beginning. And all right, now we're going to test the x-axis motor by using the jog for the x-axis in software. So we'll press the one direction in jog, see if it moves in that direction. See it move. It does move in that direction quite well. And we'll go in the other direction, and it moves in that direction correctly. So we have successfully connected the USB controller to the driver and the motor to the driver. We have put power to the driver from the power supply. Made sure that the power supply is set correctly for input voltage. Um, you know what these terminals are for the. USB controller and the proper way to wire the USB controller to the driver and you also understand a little bit about the coils within the motor and how to wire the motor in, diff in three different modes bipolar parallel, bipolar serial and unipolar. On the next video I'll show you the, the next two drivers and next two motors will hook up will connect both of those to the USB controller and the power supply. We'll go through the same process and we'll make sure that those motors are working as well. Thank you for watching.